Who else did you talk to about this besides Jeffrey? He said he tried to call him, and his mom. Mm -hmm. You talked to Jeffrey. Who else did you talk about? I talked to Juliet Lewis. She's one of my coworkers at Universal. She works. You still work at Universal? Yes. What the, What do you do at Universal? I'm an event coordinator. Okay. What is Juliet? What position is she? Where is she? Work? She's also an event coordinator. We work in the same department. You have a number for Juliet? Ooh, offhand. Is she in your SIM card? No, she's not. Some of the more recent numbers, her number just changed because she just moved back up north. She, within the last two months, has finished moving up to New York. She's so, subleasing her apartment. So Julia doesn't work at the Universal anymore? No, she does not. When she was watching your baby, she always, for the year and a half? Almost two years. Almost two years? Was she always in that same building? She had been at a house over in Andover Lakes for a while. That was one of the main places. Was it her house, house or was it one she was no, sharing? No, it was a friend's house. So it probably wasn't in her name? No, it was not. It do you remember not. how to get to that house? So would you get the address, maybe do a title search? Or... But she was probably just renting a room? or I think she was just running a room there for a while. Man, she's so convincing and lies in such elaborate detail. To psychotherapist Stacy Kaiser joining us out of LA. Stacy, welcome. What do you make of her demeanor? She's so calm, and all of her lies have so much detail. I mean, the way she tells it is so believable. But she know uh, we we know that none of this is true. None of these people uh, admit that they had these conversations, that they worked with her. Nothing. Part of what we know about people who are pathological liars is that they go into a lot of detail. So all of the little details, how she's talking about, oh, I sat on the step, and I do this, and I do that, that's part of the indicator that she's not telling the truth. She's trying to make it more elaborate so it sounds like she's telling the truth. What do you make of her demeanor? I would say that her affect is completely flat, that she's completely disassociated from the whole experience and not feeling much of anything at this time. Out to the line, Samantha in Kentucky. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Nancy. What's your question, dear? I have actually two questions. Um, the first one is, with her um, sleeping with that cop, could he have gotten access to the core phone that was found in her car, maybe? And the second question was um, how she had state, stated she left to work from Universal to pick up Kaylee. Now, isn't it true she was she hasn't worked for Universal in a couple in of years? In years, in years, she hasn't worked there. All this business about losing her phone there and filing an incident report with Universal, she hasn't worked there in years. Out to Mike Brooks, former Fed with the FBI, uh, a cop getting chloroform? I, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so either, Nancy. It, uh, that just doesn't add up. Uh, and it also, uh, on the on the whole investigative side of things, I seriously doubt if he would have any access to any of the investigative files in this case at all, too. To Jack Trimarco, polygraph expert, former Fed with the FBI. Uh, Jack, we understand the grandparents are now refusing to take a polygraph. Very often we hear people opt to take a private polygraph arranged by their lawyer. Why? Well, Nancy, uh, quite frankly, the lawyer uh, will never be sure that the client can pass the polygraph test. And so any uh, credible defense attorney in the country is going to first polygraph their client privately to be sure that he can pass the exam before he turns them over to law enforcement for the law enforcement polygraph exam. In the world of polygraph, if uh, two experts are testing the same issue, you should turn out with the same results, and thus it's going to be a positive for that person cooperating with uh, the authorities. To Leonard Padilla, you met and spoke extensively with the grandparents. Why do you believe they're not taking a polygraph? Well, I, I don't really believe it's their decision not to take it. I think Lee is the one that didn't want to take a polygraph, and at the time, I believe he influenced them to say, no, we don't want to take it. The fact is, I think that he's the one that voiced the, the objection to taking the polygraph uh, on their behalf. Uh, I, I think he strenuously objected to it, and they just kind of went along with it. To Drew Petromo with WDBO, now we learn that Lee Anthony's statement has been released. What do we learn with what the brother told the cops? Well, with what the brother told the cops, I'm, I'm not really sure what you're hitting at on that one. Is, is it something more, more specific? 
Well, I understand. Natisha, are you familiar with his statement to police? Yes. Natisha Lance, what did he say? Lee Anthony, he, the statement that he gave to police is that he hadn't seen his sister in weeks. She hadn't been around. Also, he talked about um, the same thing, that she had been with the nanny. You know, I've got his statement right here in my hands, and he describes Casey began to break down and told me she doesn't know where Kaylee is, hasn't seen her in 31 days. You know, it, it's basically the same story about the nanny, but that she actually breaks down and shows emotion that one time to Pam in Tennessee. Hi, Pam. Hi, Nancy. Thank you for keeping this on the front burner. Thank you uh, for calling in. What's your question, dear? My question is I cannot understand how... Casey Anthony came up with that very specific name of a woman who, from what Mr. Padilla said, has applied to that apartment complex for an apartment, never lived there, but yet she went to that apartment. Does she have connections in that rental office or somewhere to come up with that name? Leonard Padilla, what about it? How do, how is, where'd she get the name? Zenaida Gonzalez did come to that apartment complex. She did go there on the 17th. She did fill out an application. And uh, the, uh, the information is accurate. Her phone number is the, is the same phone number that she has as of yesterday. And I think what it is is uh, Casey has friends in apartment 218, Annie Downing and Dante. And I think somehow she got a hold of that application.